Hi. Extremely niche thought number 13. Carrot Cakes has the best sweaters on YouTube. Prove me otherwise. And this one is the creme de la creme. I used to be the kind of person who hated bright colors. Then this and the Lyrica Motoshi cloud sweater burst out of Microsoft Paint and I need it. So I've decided to recreate my very own sheep sweater. This is the suddenly sheep. This is this is the suddenly spring sheep seed stitch sweater. This is a bottom-up knit sweater with the sleeves knit separately and joined together at the shoulders. The design is unfortunately duplicate stitch, which is a bummer, but I'm not at the point where I can coordinate doing intarsia. But hopefully I will learn in the future. Instead of ribbing for the edges, I did a seed stitch. This is also a starchy border stitch that lays flat, but it looks a lot prettier in my opinion. I also noticed Carrie's original sweater didn't seem to have ribbing, so that's why I went with this option. What's different from the Knit One Pearl One ribbing is that seed stitch requires an odd number of stitches. I cast on the same method as I did with my other videos, made a slip knot, and then kind of smushed the stitches onto the needles until I got 121 stitches for the bottom of my sweater. Make sure the stitches are straight before you join in the round and mark the beginning with a stitch marker. Seed stitch is worked in a similar way to ribbing in that you alternate between a knit and a purl stitch. So like normal, I started it with a knit and then with a purl. To knit, put your right hand needle through the back of the loop in your left hand needle. Take the free piece of yarn from the back over the cross needles. Pull this working yarn through and off onto the right needle. To purl, you basically do the inverse. Bring the working yarn to the front. Put your right hand needle through the front of the loop in your left hand needle. Wrap the yarn around before pulling it down and onto the right hand needle. Do this over and over and eventually you get a flow with it. To knit faster, you can learn to speed knit and purl too. Keep doing this all the way to the end of your row. For ribbing, the last stitch should always be a purl, so you can create a continuous pattern and start the next row with a knit. But because of the uneven number of stitches we cast on, our first row ends with a knit, the same as our beginning stitch. Then we start off the next row with a purl, and that ends with a knit. For the remainder, you'll be alternating between two different row types. This ends up creating a beautiful fluffy effect. For knit one pearl one ribbing, you can keep track of what stitch you're on by looking at the columns below, but for seed stitch is a bit tricky until you have a few rows built up. Instead of looking at the whole column, I look at the preceding row of the next stitch I'm working on. If I see a knit, I know the stitch I'm supposed to do now is a pearl, and vice versa. If you mess it up, it'll be super obvious. I built up a bottom band of my sweater for 29 rows. For the body of the sweater, I decreased the stitch by knitting two stitches together. I switched from the seed stitch to knitting up in stockinette stitch. Stockinette is just a knit stitch over and over again. This part is kind of a pain because it doesn't seem like you're getting anywhere, but just keep with it and all of a sudden you're there. In the middle of my stockinette, I swapped from a green to a blue yarn for the sky. To do the color change, I just tied a normal knot between the two colors and kept knitting, hoping I would not mess it up. I had 46 rows of stockinette in green before the color swap. I then continued up in stockinette with blue until I hit under my armpits. At this point, we would join the sleeves and the body together. But first, we actually need to make them. I wanted this to be a balloon sleeve, so I followed a pattern similar to my balloon sleeve video except in reverse. The sleeves are knit top down from the armpit to the cuff. From Carrie's sweater, I love this detail in the sleeves under the armpits. So I started with 51 stitches on my needles and created a seed stitch border for 27 rows. I decreased by one stitch leaving me with 50 stitches and then continued all the way down for the length of the arm in stockinette for 75 rows. Before the cuff, I decreased every other stitch. This left me with 25 stitches and I swapped to double pointed needles to do the seat stitch for 15 rows. I finished it with a stretchy bind off and moved on to the next sleeve. After my sleeves were done, I was ready to join the sleeves and sweater body together. I heavily followed an RJ knit tutorial, so watch that if what I say doesn't make any sense. Using safety pins, I divided my sweater body into four parts, the front, back, and the sides. I also sectioned off what parts would be the armpits on each sleeve as well. This came out to a total of 120 body stitches being split up with 48 stitches for the back and the front each, and 12 for each armpit. I knit what I could normally until I got to the safety pins. I started knitting with the sleeve to join it to the body. Since I knit the sleeves top down, I didn't have live stitches on the sleeves, so instead I yarned over in the top row of the sleeve stitches to create loops to knit with. I did that all the way around the sleeve, again skipping the safety needle portion to rejoin the sweater body. I did this for one row all the way around to establish things first. At this point, I began the decreases for the shoulders. RJ Knits explained it better in his video, 
but now you have four decrease points where you're joined the sleeves to the sweater body. And you can mark these points with stitch markers. Your ultimate goal is to shape the shoulders to drive the sweater inwards for the neck. You can do two types of decreases, a right leaning or a left leaning decrease. A right leaning decrease is the knit two together, which you should have already done at other points in this tutorial, but I never explained it. So take your right needle under the two stitches and knit them as if they were one and pull off onto your right needle. A left leaning decrease is the slip slip knit. You slip the two stitches as if you were going to knit them, but you don't actually. Then you take them off onto your right needle without wrapping the working yarn around. This twists the stitches. Then you take your left needle through both of those and then you knit like normal onto your right needle. It gets kind of confusing after a while, so I use different colored stitch markers to differentiate which side corresponds with which type of decrease. I use blue for right leaning decreases and yellow for left leaning decreases. A basic rule of thumb is to just think about what type of decrease will drive it towards the neck inwards. During the decreases, I made a mistake. I was worried I had knit the body up too much and it was already too long. So to compensate, I decided to do two decreases at each stitch marker point, which made the end result really wonky. So I decreased by eight stitches in each round when I should have done four. I'll show you anyways, just make sure not to do this. So I knit the body part of my sweater as normal until I got to the blue stitch marker. I slipped the stitch marker, knit the next stitch, then knit two together, and then knit two together. And continue knitting the sleeve portion as normal until a few stitches before the yellow stitch marker. I did the SSK or slip slip knit, and then another SSK before a final knit stitch and slipping the stitch marker over. You have to think of it as taking the stitches from the sleeve portion, not outside of it. Again, RJ Knits explains this all better, but after the decreases were supposedly finished, according to his tutorial, I realized I still wanted to decrease more so I could have a high neck. For the rows when the stitches began running out, it was a bit tricky, but afterwards I kept decreasing by one stitch, alternating between this SSK or knit two together stitches each round. I did this for 18 rows. I did a final SSK before I stopped decreasing, leaving me with 59 stitches. All the way around. I did seed stitch for 24 rows, making the neck, followed by a stretchy bind off again, and I was almost done. At this point, I would have done the Kitchener stitch to resolve the armhole situation, but as you can see, this sweater is already kind of tiny on me, and the arms especially because I had that mix up where I decreased too much. So if I sew them up, I think I wouldn't be able to get into it. Once the sweater was supposedly done, I still wanted to create a cute sheep landscape. But this is how it turned out, and I was losing seam, so let's get through this fast. To do the duplicate stitch, I weaved a tapestry needle with my yarn color of choice and worked with the V stitches on the sweater, going out from the inside, up through and under the top stitch before, and then in again where the stitch originated. It's basically painting with yarn. Be warned, this is very tedious and eats up a ton of yarn. I already knew this was going downhill, so I quit in the middle because it's nothing that editing can't fix, right? But basically, that's it. Here's the final result. It's still not where I want it, but super happy that it's over. I love the colors and the concept, but the execution is off, but I know how to improve it. And as opposed to my first sweater, I can actually stand looking at this. This is something that I actually want to redo again, and I'm happy with where I'm at. So yeah, that's the video. Thanks for watching, and here's to many more.